Hello and welcome to another macro video. Today I'm looking at a couple of questions. What is a macro and are macros safe? I'm asking these questions because uh, a lot of people can see that macros are useful but they're just a little bit wary. So let's see if we can help with that. Uh, I think that there are two major misconceptions that might be holding you back if you're thinking, well, you're not too sure about macros. Um, the first one is, what is a macro? And if you look on the internet, just, you know, just Google the phrase, what is a macro? This is one of the, the first definitions you get. Um, it says it's a, a macro is an automated input sequence that imitates keystrokes and mouse actions. A ma macro is typically used to replace a repetitive series of keyboard and mouse actions. Now, that is a very, very limited version of what a macro is. Uh, so it's just saying that it's a series of uh, keystrokes and mouse actions. So, And this comes from uh, the time when macros were just recorded. You can record a macro by... Uh, typing things in the keyboard and doing things and, and the uh, Visual Basic will record that and you can use it as a macro but macros are way more than that. So I'm going to ask a question and that is what is an app? And the answer to that might be well it's something that you download onto your phone or tablet and it does useful things. Okay so I ask the question yes but what does it actually do? Um, well, anything. I mean, what do you want to do? There's apps to do anything, all sorts of things. But it's generally stuff to do with information of various types. Well, I want to say that a macro is simply an app or application, which is what uh, app is short for, uh, for use with Microsoft Word. So it's a, a Microsoft Word app. And Another way of looking at it is to say that it's a tool for use with Microsoft Word. Okay, but it's much broader than the idea that you get if you just type uh, what is a macro. So if you think about a, a woodworking tools, well, what about a saw? Um, yes, a saw is a woodworking tool, but there are lots of other ones. There are all sorts of things that you might call woodworking tools and a saw is just one of those. So macros, I, I want to get across, is uh, a much broader term. There's way more that you can do with macros than just the simple definition that you're given on the internet. So a macro, if you like, is a sort of woodworking tool. In other words, it's a term meaning a tool. That, and there's lots of things you can do. Okay, um, well, the fact that my book has 650, more than 650 macros, gives you an idea that there's a lot more you can do with a macro than just the very simple things. Right, and our second misconception uh, is whether apps are safe, whether macros are safe. Well, macros from the internet, there are some macros on the internet that are very dangerous. Um, there are people who have... Uh, put macros onto Word files so that if you download the Word file that a macro comes with it and that macro can actually get inside your computer and communicate your information across the internet or vice versa it can put information into your computer so yes macros from the internet can be dangerous um, so what about the macros that I produce um, yes, they can be. Uh, they can be uh, macros can be used to do things secretly, but if the macros come from a safe source, then they are 100% safe. And the macros that I produce, obviously, are not ones to uh, look inside your computer. They are ones to help you with your work. But the other danger with macros from the internet is that you can then communicate those problems to somebody else's computer. So what about my macros? Can those macros that I use, uh, or that you use of my macros, can they be transmitted to your client? So when the client gets a file back from you, when you've used macros, what does the client actually see? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Um, 
the client has no way of knowing that you've used macros in the work that you've been doing. The files don't contain any evidence at all of your macros. They're just tools that you've used. OK, I want to move to another way of looking at this question. Are macros safe? Because we want to think, well, can macros actually damage your file? And you know, the files that you're working on. And this is something from the past when uh, programmers have produced macros for editors and editors have uh, had their their files uh, changed and they've produced all sorts of problems that the editors have then had to uh, sort out themselves. So can these macros damage your files? Can my macros damage your files? And I'm saying yes uh, because, what's my definition? Uh, a macro is a tool for use with Microsoft Word and any tool can be dangerous if it's wrongly used. So, But the onus is on you. I provide the tools and you have to be careful how you use them. But then again, uh, if we ask the question, can they damage your files? I want to say that there are three types of macros that I produce and some of them are absolutely safe. Even someone who is using them carelessly can still use them without actually damaging the files. Some are relatively safe and some, yes, are very dangerous because they are very powerful. And powerful tools, if misused, can be dangerous. OK, let's use a, a, an illustration, a bit of a poor illustration. Uh, can you, how much damage can you do to a tree? Well, uh, here are three tools, a camera, a pen knife or pocket knife if you like, um, and a chainsaw. Well, clearly a camera is not going to do any damage. You're just taking pictures of it. All you, can, all you can do with it, but it's a useful tool, taking pictures of the tree. And you can look at the top of the tree, the bottom of the tree, you can look at the branches, you can focus in close on things, but you can't harm the tree by using a camera. Pen knife, yes, you can do a little bit of damage if you misuse a pen knife. Um, and a chainsaw, obviously, is a powerful tool. You can do a lot of damage. So I'm saying that there are three types of macros. So the first one is what I will call analysis macros. This is like the camera. It's taking photos of your text. And the point of these analysis macros is that they can warn you of potential inconsistencies. And the most obvious um, macros from that point of view are these five macros here. Uh, the latest of which is Word Paralyze, which uh, has just been released. And if we look at uh, an example, bring it in, here we go. So um, Word Paralyze, as you can see, can show you in your text whether words are used as two words or as a, a single combined word. And that information is useful to show you that ground shock, that's an inconsistency. Um, other things might not be. Uh, backup might not be in c an inconsistency, but it's up to you to interpret the information that Word, Word Paralyze produces for you. Uh, Dockalize, that produces all sorts of different types of uh, information. It analy anal analyzes various things in your text about serial commas, uh, spacing, hyphens, um, the initials, how initials are, whether they've got full stops. Uh, oh, there's loads of things there that that, uh, that produces. Um, Hyphenalize, again, that produces all sorts of uh, information that tells you about your text and warns you about inconsistencies. So, you know, is above mentioned uh, hyphenated or not? Well, it sometimes is and sometimes isn't in that text. Bitstream, look, that's another one uh, that looks as if it might be wrong. And uh, the recent version of hyphen lies also brings in this check with uh, an n dash for uh, uh, words, so hyphenated or uh, with an n dash. And then uh, spelling error lister is useful. It generates a an alphabetic list of all the different uh, spellings in the text, so you can look and see whether any of these are or are not spelling errors. If they're spelling errors, they are somewhere in your book and you need to change them. But this warns you in advance what the spelling errors are. 
Okay, so let's move that out of the way. So those are the cameras. Those are the ones that look at your text without doing any damage. The next uh, set of, um, of macros, which can be misused, but they're ones that speed up the changes uh, as you make them, as you read. So you're reading a sentence here. Uh, John's first problem, whoops, OK. Click in the uh, S apostrophe there and run a macro to switch it round. Uh, first problem were, oh, sorry, that uh, should be was. Click in the word were and change it to was. Um, not spotting a spelling error which he had made. Well, that I think probably, that he had made. So uh, it changes that automatically. This was cause a lot of trouble. Um, ah, this was causing a lot of trouble. So I click in there and it changes it automatically. So those changes were made by three macros. Um, swap characters was the first one. Multi-switch was the one that switched the words over. And uh, the cause to causing, and it goes back again. If I run the macro again, it goes back to cause. Um, those are three macros that you use as you are reading. Um, but then we have uh, global changes, which really are A, powerful, and B, dangerous, therefore, because you're making global changes and you can get that wrong if you're not careful. So what have we got? The, the most powerful, the most useful, uh, without which I wouldn't do my work, is Fredit, Find and Replace Edit. Um, that is so powerful that there are 15 videos um, explaining different aspects of what you can do with it. Um, but then there are many other global type macros that you might want to use. Um, they are very powerful, but they are not safe if they are misused. So obviously in the book I will explain how you use these macros and they are, uh, there are videos to show you how they are used, but it's up to you to use them safely. But two things I would say uh, in, in using these global macros to really save yourself time. Um, one is to learn slowly. Do simple things and gradually build up your experience of using the macros. So fret it, use it for simple things and then slightly more complicated things and gradually build up and use them for more and more things. Um, and this, the really important point is that you must only use global macros before you actually read the text. So anything which is going to change the whole of the file that you're working on must be done before you read the text. As you read, you think, ah, I shouldn't have done that. I've, it's uh, That global change has, has caused problems. It's found false positives, and so I need to uh, adjust that or change it before I move on to the next file so that, that global change is not uh, causing a problem. OK, so to summarise uh, what uh, we've said today, uh, the macros are a way more powerful than the traditional definition that you get off the internet. They are very uh, versatile things. Macros from a trusted source are perfectly safe. You don't need to worry about them uh, producing uh, viruses on your computer, as long as they're from a, 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 a safe source. Uh, your client won't have any idea that you're using macros and nothing is communicated to the uh, client in, your in the files that you send them of the macros that you've used. Some macros are completely safe to use, like the analysis macros, but you do need to be careful when you're using the global change macros. Okay, that's it. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, then do feel free to email me at that address. Bye for now.